Is your robot having problems following lines or turning at junctions? This video will show you how to fix it. To start with, I will show the advantages of a proportional line follower compared to on-off control. Are you unsure whether to use one or two color sensors? I will develop my blocks for both types, moving forwards and backwards. I will explain how to deal with different types of junctions using both spin turns and pivot turns, so your robot can navigate complex paths with confidence. Finally, I will show some enhancements like speed ramping for smooth acceleration and explain a straightforward method for optimizing your line follower to get the best results. First, let's have a quick look at the simple robot I have made for this video. From above, we see the hub mounted directly between the two motors. A normal competition robot would have one or two sensors. I am using four here just to show the possibilities. They are mounted at two stud heights or 1.6 millimeters above the floor level. Okay, now let's look at line followers. The simplest type uses on-off control. The robot will move towards white if the sensor sees the black line and towards black if it doesn't. By this method, it will follow the border between black and white with a zigzag motion. It actually works quite well, but the smooth motion of a proportional line follower allows faster movement. With on-off control, the motors switch between two different directions to follow the line. With proportional control, the speeds of the two motors are smoothly adjusted. This line follower uses only one sensor. The reflected light value varies from about 30% to 90% from black to white across the line. The error signal is formed by subtracting 60% from the sensor signal, so the robot should follow the border between black and white. Here we see the complete program for a three second movement at 60% speed. The monitor broadcast uses the line graph to display the motor power MP and the error signal. This is useful for diagnostics. The parameter KP is used to optimize the line follow performance. If it is too high, the robot will be unstable. A low value will give a slow response. Using the Ziegler-Nichols method, we need to find the value which gives neither increasing nor decreasing oscillation and used half of this for KP. Now let's modify the line follower to work with two sensors at the front of the robot. We now form the error signal by calculating the difference between the sensors. If the sensor values are not equal, the difference is multiplied by KP and used to adjust the motor speeds so as to make them equal. This moves the robot to the middle of the black line. The optimum KP is half the one sensor value. The advantage of using two sensors is that junctions to the left and to the right can be detected. Now we have made basic line followers with one and with two sensors. Let's make them more useful. I will make a line follower my block using one sensor which moves for a defined distance in centimeters. When the motor turns 360 degrees, the robot moves by the circumference of the wheel, which is 17.5 centimeters. To convert from centimeters to degrees, we need to multiply by 360 divided by 17.5 which is 20.57. I had to adjust this to 19.5 to give best accuracy at 70% speed. We save the starting position of motor A in the variable motor pos A, and then calculate the degrees traveled inside the repeat loop. When the degrees traveled reaches the number of degrees to travel, we exit from the loop. Inside the loop, we follow the line as for the basic line follower. For a two sensor line follower, we would only have to change one command in the my block. Now let's make a more useful version, which moves forwards using a color sensor at the front and backwards using one at the back. The first part has to set up three variables, which are different for forwards and reverse. If the motor power MP is negative, we move backwards. Sensor D on the right at the back is selected. The sign of the control action is reversed and KP reverse is selected. The back sensor is four centimeters behind the wheels, whereas the front sensor is eight centimeters in front. This influences the optimum value of KP. If MP is positive, we set up the three variables to move forwards. The second part of the mind block uses the variable sensor to choose the color sensor. 
it uses the variable sine, plus or minus one, for the control action, and the variable kp to select the appropriate value of kp as defined in the init i block. This short program moves the robot forwards for 50 centimeters, waits half a second, and then reverses for 50 centimeters at 70% speed. Now let's try to stop at a junction. This simple my block uses the right front sensor to follow a line until it reaches a right junction or a crossroads. It can't detect a left junction as it has no left side sensor. There are two simple improvements we can make to this. We can drive a small distance further to position the robot for a turn. To do this, we add an offset parameter as shown. With an offset of 8 cm, the robot is positioned nicely for a spin turn. The other improvement we can make is to add a delay before the sensor looks for a junction. This gives the robots time to get on the line when starting to line follow. A short delay is all that is needed. OK, now let's modify this mind block to work with two sensors at the front so we can stop at a left junction or at a right junction. Here we see the modified mind block using both sensors. We follow the middle of the line until either of the front color sensors sees a black line. We then drop out of the loop and move forwards by the distance specified in the offset parameter. As we have seen, the value of kp is different for two sensors. Now, all this line following is not much use unless we can turn at a junction. The Lego move right or left block does quite a good turn. I have made it a bit more user-friendly by putting it into this turn my block. With the direction parameter, we can decide on a spin turn or a pivot turn. With the angle parameter, we specify the angle to turn. For a spin turn, where the wheels turn by the same amount but in opposite directions, we set the direction to 100. A positive or negative angle will turn clockwise or anti-clockwise by the specified number of degrees. To pivot on the right wheel, the direction has to be plus 50 with positive movement speed. And for the left wheel, minus 50 with negative movement speed. The angle turned by the Lego move block relates directly to the motor. So we need to calculate how many degrees to turn the motor in order to turn the robot through the required angle. The distance between the robot's wheels is 16 centimeters. So with a spin turn, the robot travels in a circle with a 16 centimeter diameter. The wheel diameter is 5.6 centimeters. So we need to multiply the number of degrees to turn by 16 divided by 5.6, which is 2.86. I found in practice a value of 2.9 gives the best accuracy. For a pivot turn, the robot moves in a circle with radius 16 centimeters or diameter 32 centimeters. This gives a factor of 32 divided by 5.6 or 5.71. I found that 5.8 gives the best results. So the my block turned has three parameters. The speed of the turn from 0 to 100%, the angle to turn through, positive for clockwise, negative for anti-clockwise, type S for a spin turn, R for pivoting on the right wheel, L for pivoting on the left wheel. The distance from the front color sensors to the wheels is 8 centimeters, half the distance from wheel to wheel. Because of this, the robot is correctly positioned for a pivot turn when it detects a junction. For a spin turn, it has to drive 8 centimeters further before turning. If you have two sensors at the front of the robot, you can make a my block to select which sensor you use for line following. This makes it possible to drive over junctions without a disturbance. Here, I use the right sensor at the first and third junctions, and both sensors at the second junction. If I swap the sensors around, there is a small disturbance at each junction. Now let's look at driving over junctions. This my block has a parameter which defines which junction to turn at. A value of 1 will turn at the first junction, 2 at the second, and so on. Here I have made a short program where the number parameter is set to 3, so the robot stops at the third junction. Adding the start delay to give the line follower time to get on the line gives greater reliability for a longer course with many turns. Here we use a combination of the LF stop junction count delay my block and the turn my block. 
This is the program for the full course. Okay, now we have looked at various line followers moving with fixed speeds. Let's now look at acceleration and deceleration. Instead of using a fixed value for motor power MP, we calculate MP using this equation. The speed varies from MP1 to MP2 over the distance specified. This ramp can be added to any of the line follower my blocks we have looked at. Here, with no ramp, we use MP directly to drive the motors. With the ramp, we calculate the variable MP using the equation and then drive the motors with the variable. This shows you how to program the variable MP for the ramp equation. Now that we have got speed ramps, we can combine some ramp blocks to make a speed profile line block, which ramps up the speed, holds it for a distance, and ramps down again. This is easily done by combining three my blocks as shown here. This speed profile is similar, but it continues to the next junction after the second ramp. It is also made from three my blocks and has the same four parameters. Here we see the profile in action together with the line graph display. Well, I hope you found this useful. Line following is a fundamental activity for Spike Prime and is a requirement in most robot competitions. This playlist has videos covering other topics which you may find interesting. Please like and subscribe. See you next time.